Hi, I'm John Reif, and today is the day after the national election, and I'm thinking about that election, and I suspect many of you are too. I have four thoughts I'd like to share with you as we uh, work our way through this aftermath. First thought is, whatever outcome might have come from the election yesterday, it would not have solved all of America's problems. Whoever got elected, we would still be facing deep, sometimes intractable, but perhaps not always intractable problems. And so we are facing deep problems, and they may seem intractable, but not all of them are. So that's the first thought. This is a reminder because you all know this. Second thought is um, a short story. Miles Horton is the person who founded a place called Highlander Center in East Tennessee. And Highlander Center uh, began as a place for uh, factory workers in the South to come together to figure out how to organize and address problems they faced. Uh, Miles built the capacity of Highlander Center to bring together uh, black workers and white workers in one place in the 1930s when that wasn't done in the South. And Highlander morphed into uh, one of the cradles of the civil rights movement. Miles' autobiography is entitled The Long Haul, and he chose that title because he said something like this, if you care about democracy and justice, you have to commit yourself to work for those things over the long haul because you will be needed working for those things for the rest of your life. So today, we face, just as we faced before the election, the long haul for our work for democracy and justice. The next story I'd like to tell comes from uh, a friend uh, you may know, Nadine Cruz. About 20 years ago, I had the opportunity uh, to hear from Nadine a story about her youth uh, as a college student in the Philippines, which is her native country. And during the time she was a college student, she got involved in uh, the revolutionary movement uh, seeking to overthrow the dictator, uh, Fernando Marcos. And uh, eventually she figured out that she was probably being targeted for a, by a death squad and left the Philippines and came to the U.S. where uh, she's worked since then. She told me that while she was part of the revolutionary movement, someone told her, sometimes conditions are such that the movement for change can make great strides that you can organize lots of people and mobilize them to join you and work together to progress toward a vision of a better society. And sometimes the best you could hope for is to find a cave in the hills where you can hide out and keep the spark alive until things change so that you can come down from the hills and begin to organize and draw lots of people in again. And hearing that story from her 20 years ago has personally been really important for me because there have been some serious downs and ups in my career as someone working for uh, civic engagement and democracy and social justice. And that 
story has helped me have hope in the future. And the final story comes from John Dewey, who exactly 100 years ago wrote a little essay called The Need of an Industrial Education in an Industrial Democracy, because in 1916, the U.S. was an industrial society, and so he was thinking about, as an industrial society, what kind of education do we need? And he starts off by saying, well, clearly, people need to learn the things that will fit them to hold jobs in our economy, uh, to be able to support themselves and live uh, reasonably comfortable lives and to contribute to the economy that supports us all. All that's in his first paragraph. And he says, other people talk about this. I'll let them tell you more. What I want to talk about is um, what does democracy need from the people who make up the society? And what democracy needs is for the people to have the understanding in a way that they can act on it, that it matters if we work together with other people to create a common good. He says, to have that conviction and act on it requires a whole set of dispositions that, unfortunately, do not grow on bushes. So, those dispositions have to be cultured, they have to be nurtured. And that's the job of education. So he concludes this part of the essay by saying, democracy must be born anew with each generation, and education is its midwife. So, if you're involved, as I am, in the work of education, you're at one of the critical points where you can work to build a future for democracy. And if we can work together to build that future for democracy, we can enjoy the fruits of it. Or perhaps those who come after us can. So, thank you and my best to you.